Hey guys, thank you for coming back to my channel. Uh, if you're new, hi. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. Uh, today we're going to be watching another video of Weird History. Uh, it's a video about how, what, what was the life like in a medieval castle, which is, I think, a pretty interesting subject. And I hope we all learn from this. And uh, yeah, I'll give you my reaction while we're doing this. Made life in a castle look like an episode of MTV Cribs. Provided you're one of the nobles, but it wasn't all feasts and yeah. festivals. Castles were dark, dank, smelly fortresses loaded with vermin and disease. Imagine the hygiene problem, though. Today we're exploring what life was really like in a medieval castle. If you were one of the lucky ruling class, you got to indulge in rich wine and Oof. the occasional hot bath. For the most oh, part, shit. there wasn't much comfort or relaxation to be... Imagine if you're the king, and that's your throne, a wooden chair, and it's a... It's one of the ugly. Oh, this must be like a poor king, like a, a king who was just struck with poverty because of the rule. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. Oh, and that's not enough. Leave yeah. A comment to us and let us know you have to comment. Like it's not enough to just subscribe, man. Castle smell terrible. Yeah. Imagine the smell. That's, that's the thing that is the most disgusting to me because, you know, when you're just thinking about it you know you have dreams or you have i don't know dreams it's not really a dream it's like you imagine yourself what would it be like to be a king in like the 16th century um and it must be so disgusting like the smell and the hygiene nobody i mean just imagine the hygiene level there's no toilet paper there's no toothbrush there's no shampoo there's no body wash <laughs> there's nothing there's no, uh, you have a, you, pro you have a problem with your tooth, good luck, there's no anesthetic, someone comes, pulls it out, and that's the easy thing, a tooth problem, easy, you, you break your leg, you lose your leg, amputation, what? There was no such thing as running water, and absolutely no way to flush a toilet. Waste just collected in a big cesspool beneath the toilets, essentially making every castle a giant porta potty. Yeah. Picture that porta potty on the hottest day of the summer. Maybe that's why everyone on Game of Thrones is so angry all the time. And it wasn't just the perpetual stench of feces making. I fart in your general direction. No running water means no baths unless you are super rich. So all the servants in a castle were running around smelling as ripe as my old gym bag. On top of that, the servants yeah. couldn't afford medicine like lords and nobles could. So you're well, you know, the medicine you could afford, even then. ...intensely ill and trying to make do with home remedies or praying to God it would go away. And praying to God. Speaking of those toilets... Castle toilets were just benches with holes in them. Privacy yeah. ...wasn't really a thing in castles yeah. unless you owned the place. So when you had to run off to the bathroom to do your necessaries, you'd be doing it on a long wooden bench with several holes cut into it in full view of your friends co-workers and really anyone else who happened <laughs> co-workers <laughs> flushing so your business would just... well i guess you know when you think about it culturally back then i don't know how this is just me being purely speculative i don't know anything about this or as, at least i don't know as much in depth as i possibly want to um but i think culturally or just the way it was because everybody shed together and i don't think there was any stigma surrounding shitting with people seeing you like nowadays if you're in the toilet in a public bathroom and it's open everybody it's disgusting everybody's repulsed and you you're disgusting and uh, have you no shame but back then i guess you know the way because it, it was a normal thing it was normalized you know like like anything that's normal nowadays that might seem completely alien to people in the 16th century like Showing more than your calves. I mean, that's really funny when you read books that were written like the 19th century and um, uh, like the people start uh, telling about the young generation how <laughs> like they're, they're, they're showing uh, skin, but like when you think about skin, you think someone with a bikini. No, no, they're showing like um, from between their calf and their, their knee. Like if a girl was showing like her calf, she was a Drop down into a gigantic pit of horrors inside the castle. And let's hope you never accidentally dropped your wagon keys in there because you might as well be throwing it into a septic volcano. The average castle house over 100 people. 
You know how cramped the house gets when one or two. A hundred. That's it. Is it? Multiply that times one hundred, and that's what. Okay, I might be imagining like huge castles in my mind because a hundred people in a castle. Maybe he's talking about like the twelfth, thirteenth century. Because I'm imagining, I'm imagining myself with those sixteenth, seventeenth century castles, like the Palace of Versailles, which is so vast. I don't remember the square footage, but it's something like I think six hundred thousand square feet. Living in a castle, I'm not sure I understand, but castles require dozens of servants just to maintain the day-to-day -day workings. Not to mention the several generations of the lord and lady's families living there. That's a beautiful painting. Personal servants and attendants. It was like living in a tiny, cramped city, all serving the needs of a single family. Yeah. Castles had extremely unpleasant dungeons. We've all seen enough fantasy films and Disney cartoons to know that castles had dungeons where the lord and lady could throw privilege. Yeah, I'm gonna challenge this. I watched uh, another video where they showed how, um, how to build a castle, like the perfect castle, which is a pretty popular video on YouTube. You can go watch it. It's how to build the perfect... I think that's it by Epic History TV. It's, it's an amazing video. But what they said was that there were no dungeons like this. Like, you know, in the in the basement with, you know, prisoners yelling and, the, the, you know, the, you imagine all the torture devices. I'm not saying they didn't exist, but most castles uh, on the basement level, uh, it was uh, for the purpose of a granary, of, um, of ration, or rations, of extra food, basically. It wasn't to uh, keep your prisoners. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Anyone who happened to offend them at any particular moment. What they tend to skip in the Disney films is that these prisoners were routinely tortured in grotesque ways. Yeah. The popular method involved letting the prisoner be eaten alive from the inside out by hungry yeah. rats. Ah, isn't that fun to watch? In addition yeah, as to I said, plain old uh, comment in the comments if someone's watching this. I hope someone is. Uh, but I'm pretty sure from uh, just listen, I, I've watched one video. That's my opinion. I'm forming from that video. Maybe the guy's wrong. But it makes more sense that, that, that what he said, that you're not going to keep a place like a dungeon, like a, a, a huge amount of place just for your prisoners. I mean, what are you, a uh, fantastical villain? I'm not saying there were not places where, you know, the dungeons, there were, you know, prison cells. But, I don't know. Sadistic. The common belief was that the extreme pain helped cleanse the person of their sins, which brings you know some of the. To the I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm pausing a lot. Just want to voice my opinion. Some of the torture devices you see, a lot of them are actually um, <laughs> sort of uh, how should I put this? There are a lot of them that attack your uh, nether area, so to speak. Your backside nether area. This is for your You're own so. Uh, and while we're talking about rats. The quartering and the, you shared your living spaces with rats. Rats can be tricky to deal with even today. So imagine what it was like living in a gigantic, dark, damp castle with no modern traps or pest control. Rats were everywhere, and there uh, wasn't much you could do about them. You just sort of accepted. I don't want to voice my opinion here because I don't have enough, like, true knowledge on the subject. But he, he's really. I think making a caricature of what a, living in a castle was like, you know, he's putting like all the myths, or I don't say myths, but all the all the things that come to your mind right away when you think medieval castle and living in the 16th, 15th century was like, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe he's right, maybe he's a hundred percent right, but. Uh, based from the either 8,000 people who disliked it. So maybe there's Rat maybe he's exaggerating at certain points. Like I don't know. Chevy Malibu of the day. After a while, you'd imagine people would get used to the rats, but many medieval folks were deathly afraid of them. Certainly didn't help that they were a popular instrument of torture or that around this time they carried a plague that eradicated around half the population. Okay, so he's speaking about the Black Plague was in the 13th, 14th century. 14th century. I'm pretty sure it's on 14th century, because, yeah, it is, on 14th century, it's 1300s. So, he's speaking about living in a castle in the 13th century, which is basically, that's when castles were uh, uh, military, uh, for uh, they were useful military purposes. That's why they had small windows, 
I don't remember the, the, specific, uh, the specific name for it, but you know those small windows that are very small on the outside, but, but when you're in the castle, they are larger. It's uh, for shooting arrows. There were military uh, constructions. They were not there for pleasure. Later on, you know, when you see uh, the chateaus in France, they're specifically, you know, to live in, in comfort and pleasure. Everyone was drunk all the time. At this point, it should come yeah. to no surprise. Maybe. That castle dwelling folk like to stay sauced. Because yeah. the best way to get through a day inside an overcrowded Pusnelli yeah. house of rat torture was with a mug of ale. Well, I think, I don't know if, if he's going to touch upon this subject, is because uh, at the time, the water was not clean. Uh, and this is just me speculating. I'm just assembling whatever information I have in the back of my mind, but I'm pretty sure he, that's. How it was, you know, there, there was no clean water, hence people just, you know, uh, drank wine and meat and beer. Lords and ladies got to drink pretty much whatever they wanted, including fine wines, beers, and spirits. But the servants, they had to take what they could get. It was actually safer to drink alcohol than water, because yeah. most water you could find would be so contaminated, the TSA would confiscate it as a weapon. The workday began on sunrise. With all that drinking going on, That's I assume that most people in a castle wouldn't drag themselves out of bed until mm, at least noon. And while that may have been true for the lords, the servants had to get up to work as soon as the sun came up. Electricity obviously didn't exist yet, so sunlight was crucially important. Castles are dark places, even during That's the day. That's pretty good room, actually. The servants had to capitalize on every second of sunlight just to get their work done. Even if you didn't work in a castle... Yeah, yeah man, imagine being a peasant in the middle of uh, times must have sucked. Wealthy. Odds are you worked as a merchant or a craftsman or laborer, so you had to be up at the crack of dawn if you expected to make any money. You took baths in giant wooden tops. Contrary to popular belief, people like taking baths in medieval times yeah. as much as they do today. It's just that clean water was hard to come by, especially for the lower class. We really can't stress how important plumbing is. The tub itself was a cartoonishly giant wooden bucket that could be carried from room to room. And especially, I mean, when people see those those kinds of tubs, the thing that comes uh, 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 that comes to my mind right away. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. This is embarrassing. It's uh, Western movies. You know when the the cowboy is like lounging and has like both both his legs outside the bath. So for people to bathe in, didn't approach the definition of either hygienic or private. But at least you got to scrub off some of that castle funk. Castles were very dark and should be called. Castles. Yeah, he's, I think he's speaking about very old castles, like the 13th, 14th, 12th, even before that centuries. Because I know, from what I've seen, uh, with castles uh, after like 15th, 16th, 17th century castles, I'm sure there were castles from that um, in that. Uh, for that purpose, which is, was a military purpose, which they were more practical than comfortable. But I know for a fact that there were castles uh, emerging. At, I don't know before that. I don't know. Maybe there were a lot of castles that were very comfortable before the 15th, 16th century. But afterwards, you know, palaces, if you will, they were very comfortable. Nothing in the way of insulation. They were designed primarily as fortresses rather they than dwellings. So dope. Was made of cold stone. They looked so the cool. There were, didn't let in much sunlight. Yeah. Lords and ladies would have the nicer rooms with fireplaces and windows. But nice. The quarters were often located in the lower interior of the castle. Yeah. Rich and lightless warrens that were breeding grounds for diseases that thrive in the damp. Dude, you know, that's disgusting. I think I'd rather sleep outside. I mean, at that point, yeah. There was always a feast or festival. There was always something going on in a castle. I mean, if you were the cook holiday, for Henry VIII, yeah. Visiting noble family. So consequently, huge extravagant meals were the norm rather than the exception. If you were one of the cooks, you got to spend all day preparing the feast and then have your own meager meal in the kitchen. Meanwhile, the lords and ladies of the house would entertain their guests at a long wooden meal table with people seated according to their importance. Is it me or he's he's pushing way too uh, he's putting way too much emphasis on like if you were a peasant your life sucked and like uh, you did all that for the lords but your life afterwards uh, you will go have your own ego meal he said that like a couple of times I didn't mention it but like why are you saying I, don't, I get it why you're saying it you want to portray how it was living as a peasant but I think anybody who has like a like a small amount of rational thinking should know that I mean 
it, 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 what, it, like it's it's logical, no? 15th century, the world is filled with absolute monarchs. What do you expect? Like, no, really, what do you expect? Important people would be seated at the head of the table, while the servants would be tucked all the way in the back, out of sight. Because nothing ruins a meal like having to look at poor people. It's like going to the Waffle House after your wedding, but sadder. You were seated and fed according to your status. We just said that. You were taken in the great hall of the castle. And as we mentioned, you were seated in the hall according to your status. But your status didn't only affect where you got to sit. It also determined what you got to eat. The lord and lady and their family and guests would be served gourmet dishes with exotic spices. Damn, I'm hungry right now. Yes, guys. One day, I hope one day I, I get to eat like a medieval feast. But hey, Even though that bread looks disgusting. That bread? percent of a town's no. residents were considered peasants and weren't allowed inside the castle. So even though they were working the land for the lord or lady, it was up to them to feed themselves and their families. The lord and lady didn't do any real work. The lord and lady of a castle were responsible for governing the land, which included regularly making a bunch of difficult decisions and engaging in fierce political negotiations. So they couldn't be bothered with trivial matters like preparing their meals or making sure the castle didn't fall into disrepair. Well, every castle had a huge staff of servants. In addition to the standard housekeeping duties required to keep the castle running. Uh, when he says they don't do any real work, well, when you think about real work, you think about like manual labor. But you know they're you know nobles, and so their work is basically they're basically politicians. And I mean, you might say that it's not real work. They're all charades and theater and that. <laughs> they're only, you know, but you know, if if they're not doing uh, their noble work, if they're not working as a nobility very well, I mean, they can plunge their lands in chaos if they're incompetent and idiots, you know. So, do they do any real work in terms of physical labor? No, but does their uh, status as a lord? And I'm not trying to defend lords or kings or what have you, but. You know, saying that they don't do any real work. Listen, if a king says we're going to war, if that's a some a king who wants glory for himself and his family, who's a very uh, who's a glory hound, and he doesn't care that thousands of people die under under his command, that's an incompetent, well, I'm saying incompetent king, depends on the timetable though, depends on where you are king. If you're the king in like the 13th century, and the, when a warrior culture was extremely popular and celebrated, if you were not a warrior king, someone who, who was a good at war, you were looked down upon by people. So, I don't know, my point is, I don't know what my point is, basically, they do make like important decisions though, you know? Maybe decisions that benefit themselves, but they are important in the grand scheme of things. They also had to attend to the every need and whim of the lord and lady and their families. Nobody's job was easy, but at least the lords and ladies got to kick back once in a while. Okay, so so basically his titles are completely mis <laughs> clickbaity. He says they don't do any real work, and then at the end he's like, well, at least even though the 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 the, the lord and the lady. I think he insinuated that the work so they can keep, kick back after the work. <coughs> the floors were covered in rushes. What? As we've established by now, castles were essentially reeky stone garbage heaps. Part of the never-ending effort to keep the castle relatively clean was the spreading of rushes, reeds, and herbs across the floor. The plants would absorb the unsightly spills and hopefully cover up some of the more unbearable stenches. What's Switching up old rushes for clean ones was it's like a carpet base. A body, as beer, grease, fragments, bones, spittle, excrements of dogs and cats, and everything that is nasty would be revealed. Basically, wherever you went in the castle, you were walking on a layer of barely concealed filth. Sounds like my college dorm room. Kitchen was constantly on fire. In the what? Were microwaves, George Foreman grills, and sur la table. All cooking was done over open flames, which can be a problem if you're cooking in a building full of timber and hay. In the first half of the Middle Ages, most kitchens were built out of wood for reasons that history has not yet adequately explained. Consequently, your entire kitchen catching fire over a stray ember from today's lunch service was a constant possibility. Really? Everyone and everything were flame broiled. 
It wasn't until later that stone became the building material of choice and hearths were constructed to keep cook fires contained. Well, I hope... Oh, should just like this video. What? You attended an in-house church? Yeah, I know that. Every I know about that. Yeah. Chapel, like, if you were wealthy enough, yeah. Morning mass. In fact, along with the Great Hall, the chapel was the defining structure of the castle. Everything else... Man, was that's a beautiful... You know... That's one thing, I'm not a religious person at all, but I would like to go to Europe and visit those churches, you know, uh, in England, France, Italy, Germany, because that's where all the wealth was for long periods of time. You know, people, uh, lords who had extra cash, they want to be remembered, what have you. You know, there was no, there was no like Lamborghinis to spend your wealth on. I mean, you could, you know, you could build palaces, but if you want to build something that not only spoke about your family, like in terms of legacy, to give back to the people, quote unquote. There was a lot of money was poured, poured into churches, and so they're incredibly beautiful uh, when it comes to architecture and inv in innovation and art. If you lived in a particularly fancy castle, the chapel would be two stories, so that the lord and lady and their families could sit in the upper level and literally look down on the surface. Yeah, in the side, it's like this. Person, so gross. The Middle Ages were tough, so much so that even the best case scenario of living in a castle was pretty much a miserable experience. Yeah, Middle Ages sucked. Like, the Renaissance was better, but Middle Ages, ugh. Ugh. The fact that I live, in a, uh, I live a life more lavish and comfortable than nobles, who's the peasant now? Well, well, thank you for listening. I hope you like this video. Um, tell me in the comments. If you learned anything, if you agree with my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm completely wrong here. So, yeah, write in the comments, and uh, <laughs> I hope you like this. Uh, see, you uh, see you next time.